Uh, good afternoon. Uh, so, my name is June, and this is my colleague, uh, Hugh. We both from the eBay. Uh, the team is called New Data Team, which is uh, responsible for developing and maintaining the digital data infrastructure in eBay. So, today we'd like to present to you the new graph, which is a GraphDB services that built upon Genesis Graph and Foundation DB. Well, just a, uh, give you a very brief introduction about the graph DB, right? So a graph is consists of vertices and edges. So on the right hand side, uh, on the right hand side diagram, you can see the airport is actually the vertex. Connected between this uh, airport is actually called route, which is the edge. And then you have the property uh, distance attached to the edge, right? Route, and then also the property attached to the name, which is the belong to the, the vertex airport. So the graph traversal or graph query is actually just start with a, a set of vertices, and then you follow in the incoming, outgoing edge, and move to the next set of the vertex, and then you start the examination again. So then we also have called one-hop query, which is a start with the one vertex, and then, uh, and then move to the connected vertex, uh, the next immediate the neighbor. And so this one-hop, and similarly, you can have a two-hop, three-hop, n-hop query. So in eBay, uh, we have many uh, applications that like to have GraphDB. And these applications include right, fraud detection, knowledge graph, IT infrastructure management, and product recommendation. So this GraphDB is required a real-time query, near real-time update, batch update, and also had a bulk loading at the initial time when the uh, GraphDB is being constructed. So most of these applications, excluding the first initial loading phase, actually exhibit the traffic pattern that's read heavy. So for the rest of the presentation, we will go over this uh, new graph architecture and then the uh, detail the important features that we developed for the foundation DB storage plugin. And then we also try to uh, identify some feature and improvement that we like to have from foundation DB. And finally, the conclusion. So this is a 3T architecture of a new graph. Uh, this, you start with the graph application on the left-hand side, and then you the application live with our new graph current library, which is developed by our team. And then the request will route through the gRPC and end up to the called new graph service tier. And then the request actually will be uh, landed at the particular node. And the inside this node, the request is a go to the Genesis graph. And then it go down to this uh, Genesis graph foundation DB storage plugin. And it's this storage plugin that translates the graph query into the foundation DB specific key value store based query. And then query the, then reach this uh, foundation DB uh, backend store. And this store is a store both the data table and the index table for the GraphDB. And separately, we have also have the management plan to manage the cluster and manage the schema for both the service tier and the foundation DB cluster tier. So Genesis Graph itself inherently is a support the tran uh, transaction. However, uh, it's up to the storage plugin to decide whether they're going to implement the transaction logic or not. So today, all of the storage uh, plugin download that you can get from the Genesis Graph uh, public release are, uh, are not, do not have a transaction, uh, distribute transaction. Right? So Berkeley DB is the one that supports transaction, but it's not horizontally scalable. So, but distribute transaction is the one that provided by Foundation DB is key to address the data inconsistency that we encounter when we develop this Graph DB. So I'm gonna spend the next three slides to identify the key data inconsistency that we encounter and to see that, and to show you that they, uh, the distribute transaction is the way to tackle all this issue in a very straightforward way. So the first one is, a, um, is a, you have two vertices, you add an edge. Right? This is a very sim uh, simple graph DB operation. And because the graph query usually uh, requires the forward traversal from the V1 to V2 on, the, on this diagram, and also you support the backward traversal from V2 to the V1. So as a result, the edge information had to store in two places. The first row belong to the vertex one, the second row belong to the vertex two. But because these two vertices actually scarred, it's actually sharded in different shards, and therefore this edge information update become a distributed core shard update. Right? In the uh, traditional eventual consistent system, suppose now the first row update succeed, but not the second one. So as a result, the forward uh, traversal query come from the V1 to V2 will succeed, but the V1 backward traversal to V1 will fail. Right? So if you had the digital transaction that both update of the uh, row update actually belong to the single transaction, then either all of these updates succeed, and therefore you both query succeed, or both actually uh, all both will not uh, fail and will not become visible to external world, and therefore both query will show nothing. So that is still uh, consistent. Yeah. So second one is uh, dealing with this, uh, many of these uh, uh, um, 
uh, operation related to this uh, graph DB, right? We have real-time query up, real-time query, near real-time update, batch update. So all these go to a single database, uh, database right? With the distribution transaction, all these queries can simultaneously come and they all get the consistent result. And this is very different from the traditional Lambda architecture. So if you follow the Lambda architecture, it proposes that you have a temporary DB to host this recent update and you also have master DB and you merge the, merge the data periodically from the temporary DB back to the master DB. Well, that's introduced at least two challenges. The first one is that, well, the query has to span across two uh, database, so one is, a, uh, one is the temporary DB, one is the master DB, and you have to merge the data, data back by the application. Well, therefore, the complex query is very challenging. The second one is actually introduce a backend uh, uh, complexity in terms of data management, because now you have the temporary DB, you have backend DB, both serving the online traffic. In particular, you have all of uh, these two can serve in the right traffic, and now how are you going to merge these two in a consistent way? Well, that's very challenging as well. So this slide is just to show you um, the failure handling of Genesis Graph, right? Suppose you have client, you have the node, you're going to update the node to Genesis Graph. So update the node actually introduce you, uh, it's a required, uh, uh, just Genesis Graph will give you the, the new vertex ID for each new uh, node creation. So there's a, a set of mutation, each mutation corresponding to a key value pair update, and that, those key is derived from this uh, vertex ID, right? Suppose now in this uh, eventual consistent system, some update or some mutation fail, some mutation succeed. The mutation succeed one will persist to the back end, and then the, you also show the exception because uh, some of these mutation fail. So now when this uh, client receives the exception and make a second retry, and then this retry will lead to the new vertex ID, and this lead to the new mutation uh, set, and leads to the, suppose now this mutation has succeed, and therefore you have this uh, duplicated mutation, right? Like in this case, M1 and M2, M1 prime and M2 prime in this backend database, and therefore you get potentially duplicated vertices, right? So this inherently the problem that you have in Genesis Graph if you do not have a distributed transaction backend. Well, if you have distributed transaction backend, the, uh, the, this failure handle is very simple. You just have a rollback, and this rollback will take care of this uh, parcel update failure for you. So foundation DB, we, uh, we choose, choose it as a new graph uh, backend because it distribute cross chart transaction. And in, in addition, it has a horizontal scalability, cross uh, region, the high variability, low latency, key value store access, and also have intelligent self management. So the, this diagram just show you that the, how we deploy our cluster in the Kubernetes environment. We have three cluster, DC1, DC2 forms the uh, active region, and then DC3 from the standby region. Um, so our foundation media storage plugin is based on the one that, um, that, that provided by um, the Ted Wimis. So who presented um, uh, is a um, Genesis Graph uh, foundation DB plugin uh, presentation last year in this, uh, in this uh, foundation DB summit as well. So we uh, take this, uh, what he uh, has, and then fix the bugs, and then we also add the new features, including async iterator, read-only new graph services, and read-only query optimization across the data, cent data center, and among others. So Hugh is, uh, next is going to present to you this uh, important feature that we developed in the foundation based storage plugin. Hello? Hello? Yes, good. Hello? Yeah, Drew will just introduce to you the new graph architecture um, and that we use FileChainDB as our storage backend. In the next slides, I will introduce some important features of the storage foundation, um, of the foundation DB storage plugin uh, of Janus Graph. So first of all is uh, query resolve fetching using iterator. So as you know, foundation DB can query the data using two modes, either blocking or non-blocking. With blocking, all the result can be returned in one blocking call, or uh, non-blocking, we can use uh, async iterator to fetch the resolve, resolve one by one uh, on demand. So the high-level Janus Graph query executor relies heavily on iterators to pull the data on demand. So it is very in line with the uh, non-blocking mode of FileChainDB. So that's why we use async iterator in our Janus Graph storage plugin. So here, just to give you an example, we can have a query, for example, g.v.iterator to get all the vertices in the graph. So the Janus Graph executor um, would do would first get the iterator, and then from the iterator, it can loop through each uh, in a while loop to get the result um, and then processing it. So with blocking, the, all the data will be fetched in the first call. 
so that this is not good for our new app service because it uh, increased the memory usage and also the CPU in case uh, the JavaScript executor terminate the uh, iterator as soon as it meets some, some condition. So with non-blocking, the first cone is actually return only the async iterator of uh, 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 foundation DB. And while it's fetching through the iter iterator one by one, it can get the result as needed. So this is a, a very good solution. It keep our uh, service uh, low memory and mem uh, CPU consumption. The second uh, feature is request contact propagation. So a request come from the client can has some request contact that carries metadata such as request ID, client address, and application ID. So the service upon receiving a request can get the contacts and attach it to the thread locker. And the foundation DB storage plugin can get the request contact from the thread locker and then, um, and then um, can enforcing some condition at, the, uh, at that layer to, to handle the request differently. So note that by this way, we bypass the Janus graph, so there is no code change at the Janus graph layer. And we can get the request contact at the storage uh, plugin. So how is the contact uh, useful? So with that context, uh, first we can enable the new app service to run in read-only mode. In this mode, um, basically every write request from the client will be directed. So you may think it is uh, a simple solution, just enable read-only mode at the FDB database level. Unfortunately, it is uh, impossible because the Janus graph underneath it requires some administrative uh, write operations to the database. And uh, if we enable read-only mode at the FDB, then on the uh, write from the uh, from this write on the this write from Janus Graph would be directed too. So the solution is that we check the Foundation DB storage plugin for the request context. If it exists, meaning that this this request come from the client, so that we allow uh, we we don't allow it to go to Foundation DB cluster. Otherwise, um, those requests are from Janus Graph, and we allow them to uh, go to the Foundation DB. The second use case of uh, request context is that we enable prefetching the transaction version. So remember that every Foundation DB transaction need to get the transaction version at the primary DC. This is good, it provides strong consistency. However, it uh, also causes the request to incur high latency because uh, uh, especially when the read come from the secondary DC since uh, it has a cross DC drive chip just to get, the re uh, to, to get the transaction version. So we come up with an optimization that we can allow the client to uh, uh, optionally hint that the request is of type read. And then um, in this case, the client can prefer low latency rather than strong consistency. So the client can um, annotate the request with type read and then the service will put this into the request context, and the foundation, foundation, at the foundation DB storage plugin, it can get the uh, annotation, type reads, and then instead of going cross DC to get the transaction version, it gets the transaction version locally, prefetched by uh, a different background thread that are running the background. So with this solution, we can have a low latency and a high good throughput, uh, especially in our use case, most of the workload are very read heavy. So with the example, we come up with a real graph uh, example and run some numbers. This is uh, an account linking graph in eBay. And we have uh, multiple accounts that can be linked together with different linking strategies. So in this example, you can see that account one can be linked with account two, three, four via the linking strategy one, or account one can be linked to uh, account seven via the linking strategy three. So there are two types of vertices here, account and linking strategy, and one type of edge, which is linking. Uh, note that after maybe multiple hope travels, uh, like a six or seven in this case, all the accounts are linked together. So in our deployment, as June said, we have a, a 3DC2 region deployment, and the total number of pods are um, nearly 290 pods, so it's very, very large. The database consists of um, 1.3 billion edge and 1.8 billion edge, 1.3 billion nodes and 1.8 billion edges. And the triple mode is um, 
we, we put the uh, storage uh, in triple mode, meaning that there are three copies of each data at uh, each data center, and that result in 16.8 terabyte storage uh, across on three DC. So there are three types of query uh, that we uh, experiment, uh, one hop, three hop, and th one hop, two hop, and three hops. Uh, the major query in our application is three hop traversal. Note that in this three hop, we limit the uh, query to return only 50 results to provide like consistency zero because uh, there may be some like super node that has a lot of uh, vertices that satisfy the condition. So we done the performance with, uh, from the primary DC and from both DC simultaneously. So here I only focus on the three hop traversal. So up to two DC, we can get to uh, 15,000 query per second. Um, and with that, we can get the 95 latency of less than 15 milliseconds. So we are uh, quite satisfied with this result. Note that uh, this is, we haven't put foundation DB, uh, foundation DB to the limit in this case because uh, uh, we only have a 20 service node, uh, and if we increase the number of threads, uh, the service CPU would be exhausted. So next, do we continue to talk about some feature that we want to have? Okay. Well, so um, overall, the foundation DB is great to power our GraphDB backend, but we'd like to have some uh, feature improvement or some features. So the first one is actually that five second transaction limit, right? Uh, so we maybe uh, could be in, extended to 30 seconds or one minute. Well, be, the reason why is because of some of the query, in particular the multi-hop query, that also has a, a complex pattern matching, and also have the children know that can spend thousands of children know. So in that case, uh, very often that we get the transaction uh, too old, I mean, because of the, so if, by having this longer transaction limit, then actually you can support the much more complex query. So the second one is actually, uh, we like to have a better storage management. So this happened, uh, we found this problem when we do the one week uh, long uh, residency testing, right? We add, we, add, uh, we add in the storage node, we delete in the storage node, and keep continuing doing that. And we found out that actually the storage uh, occupants actually start from the like 55% full and, all, and then go up to like 75% full. And some of them even go to 90% 90, 90 full. So this has introduced a, a storage imbalance as well. And then so this is, a, uh, we actually report into the forum. So of so far, uh, this system that we have developed so far is actually OLTP oriented. So that's, uh, we have two reasons, uh, uh, stand, uh, active and standby to support this OLTP uh, transaction. But then we like, if we want to have a, a graph analytics, and that's a workload that requires the batch retrieval over the entire database sometimes, then that we need to have a, another third reason just to host this graph analytics uh, uh, workload. So finally, I touch up this, uh, this uh, bug loading. So for the example data set that Hugh mentioned, actually it took us more than two days to load that uh, whole data set into, the, into the, the, our cluster. So now the, the question is that, is that for this initial data loading, is that the way that we can bypass the normal transaction path? Um, well, so as a conclusion, so we had to develop the GraphDB service called New Graph, which is uh, based on the foundation DB and Genesis, uh, and Genesis Graph. So foundation DB, uh, offer this uh, distributed cost shard transaction, and this is a feature that key to address the data inconsistency issue that we encounter in GraphDB. And also, with this distributed transaction, it greatly simplifies the client side application development. Right? So, with the large data set that we have, we found out that we can, we saw the foundation DB is so the high performance in terms of the high throughput and low latency. So, with that, we conclude our presentation. <laughs>